In this box is one of two things. The first possibility it can be is a really solid deal on a second hand GPU. That's what I hope it is. The second option it can be is a scam and I lose about $250. Now, why do I think it was a scam? Well, it was bought on eBay and the very first thing that kind of caught my eye was the price. It was just a really good price. The second thing was the account. I have it pulled up right now. The user joined July 2nd, 2025. If you buy anything on eBay, buying from a brand new account is usually a sign of a scam. Let's uh, open it up and finally find out. Well, that's a good sign. The packaging looks decent. There's the box. This thing is looking like it's legit, man. Let's go. This is everything that was in the listing. You could see my face. I am pretty happy about this deal. We did not get scammed. Now it's still a possibility that it's broken. So let's uh, erase that possibility and see if it works. I just finished hooking this card up to a quick little test bench. Now for the moment of truth. Okay, fans spin, RGB lights up. You can see the monitor right here, all the way in the back. <laughs> we got a post. Do you see that? Come on, that's a post, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Will it install drivers though? So far, everything is installing. It is through the NVIDIA app, which sucks, but it's not, it's not blowing up on me. When I was unboxing this GPU, you might have noticed a couple accessories that were included. We have this 1X PCIe with USB-A, and that plugs into this X16 full-size PCIe slot. These are typically used for mining rigs. Some people will be afraid to buy a GPU that was used for crypto mining, but I would much rather buy it from a crypto miner than an actual miner, a kid who's 14 just playing Fortnite all day. They typically don't care about keeping their stuff in the best condition, so it'll just get dirty, they won't clean it, etc. But with a crypto miner, they spend a ton of money, so they'll do some TLC to protect their investment. But something to note about this card, it's a little dirty, some slight dust on the surface and in the fans, and I just got done testing Firmark, but it runs actually pretty hot. The temperature was at 89C, which is basically maxed out, and that was only after seven minutes. That tells me this thing just needs to be cleaned. So now for the fun part, it's time to make this used GPU run like new. The first thing I do is take the card outside, grab my electric air duster, give it a good blow to remove all the surface dust from the shroud, fans, heat sink, and PCB. When you're blowing out any fans, make sure to hold them in place to prevent any wear on the bearings, just to be safe. So far, I'm really happy with this purchase. This is one of the easiest ways to save money when building a new PC. If you get a really good deal on the GPU, that can save anywhere from 50 to a couple hundred dollars. Another way to save money when building a PC is to not buy a Windows license from Microsoft. Instead, visit our sponsor, SuperCDK, with the links below. They sell discounted Microsoft products, and you can grab yourself a Windows 11 Pro CD key and use the discount code SPLA to get it for a fraction of the price of a retail key. To activate it, all you do is copy the key from your orders page, paste it into the window activation settings, simply follow the steps, and bam, you saved money while activating Windows, and now you can maybe buy a game on Steam to play on your new PC. Thank you, Super CDK. Be sure to check them out with the links below. Back to the GPU now. After giving it a good pass with the electric air duster, it's time to take it apart. I like using this small electric screwdriver with different size bits. If you've never taken apart a GPU before, I recommend looking up your exact model on YouTube. Chances are there's a teardown guide. It's actually fairly easy. Just take your time when pulling the PCB apart so you don't rip any wires. I've done that before. Luckily, it was just an RGB cable, but still unfortunate. You can also take pictures before disassembling it so you have something to refer back to when it comes time to reassemble it. The 
upon pulling the GPU apart, we can see exactly why the temps were bad. The thermal pads on the memory were tearing, although the other thermal pads were in good condition. But the thermal paste was drier than a corner worker after a Saturday night. I used 91% isopropyl alcohol and these little cotton pads to wipe the card down. I also have this tiny air tool to make sure nothing from the cotton pad was left behind on the PCB. When you were cleaning the GPU core, you need to be careful to not knock off any of these tiny components and try to not scratch anything or he won't be a happy camper. Reassembling the card back together, I gave it a final wipe down with some more alcohol. It booted right up on my test bench and after about 10 minutes in firm work, the temp was still quite high. But keep in mind the 3080 Ti and actually all of the 30 series weren't that efficient and ran hotter. The temps improved ever so slightly, but still a little too hot. Also keep in mind that the GPU came with the BIOS switch set to the OC version. I switched it over to silent for this next part. A fix for the high temperatures is a simple undervolt. You can use a software like MSI Afterburner and Heaven Benchmark to test for stability. Basically what you're doing is making the card run at the same clock speeds but at a lower voltage. The goal is to lower both the power draw and temps without taking a hit to performance. In MSI Afterburner you want to open up the curve editor, find the highest point on the voltage slash frequency curve, hold down control and you can move the whole line. Doing this changes the power curve of your card. Then you want to grab a lower voltage point around 775 volts and 825 is where you will see improvements. And then just drag that point to where you want the card running, click apply and keep doing this until you find the perfect balance between performance and temps. I like using Heaven Benchmark because it will crash if you apply an unstable undervolt so you will know right away what will work and what's not going to work. I ended on 1590 megahertz at 775 voltage point. This had the card running under 80C with better clock speeds that are no longer thermal throttling. So to answer my question, is buying a used GPU worth it? Hell to the yeah. I mean, look at it this way. I bought a modern-ish GPU with an NVENC encoder, great for streaming off of one PC or any creative work. It also has 12 gigabytes of VRAM and it was under $300. Now I did get a good deal, but there's no way you're getting this level of performance from a new GPU at this price. Buying used is hands down the best way to stretch your dollar. And if you haven't figured it out, I bought the RTX 3080 Ti. It sells for about $400. This was a great deal. Drop a comment below if you want to see the ultimate price to performance build with this GPU and maybe a specific budget I should target for the build. That's it for me. Smash like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.